Welcome to the Leadership Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Jono White. I'm the founder and principal consultant of Clarity. We are an Australian-based consultancy that works with leaders around the world, and our passion is to invest in people to become everything they're meant to be in order to fill the world with healthy organizations that people love to work for and customers line up to buy from. The goal of this podcast is to invest in you and your leadership. If you're just joining us for the first time, then feel free to check out consultclarity.org. That's our website, consultclarity.org. We have so many free resources on there. The most popular being our seven questions on leadership series. We've had more than 1,500 leaders from around the world in all different sectors give their in-depth answers on leadership, what books they love, what they found most challenging, uh, the most meaningful stories, how they how they structure their time through the day. That's free, so go and check it out. And we'd love to interview you about your leadership. I believe you have advice from your experience, your context, and your life so far that is important and can help other leaders. It's also a great way to give back. It's free to get involved, and you can do so by going to consultclarity.org forward slash seven dash questions dash interest, or just Google consultclarity.org seven questions interest and fill out the form that pops up. We have a free resource for you on our website. It's called Leadership Survival Guide. It's a 57 page ebook. It has interviews with 10 world class leaders, and you can go to consultclarity.org. It's right at the top and get that today. Uh, We also have a daily email that we send out to over 15,000 leaders, and that email contains the highlights, our best content from our podcasts, our blog, uh, my book, uh, the books that we're loving that are out there about leadership. It's also the best way to get access to our masterclasses and workshops before anyone else. And there's also exclusive and limited uh, special options just for subscribers. And you can subscribe by going to consultclarity.org forward slash subscribe. Now, my gift to you is to work incredibly hard to provide the best leadership content I can to invest in you and your leadership. So if you're finding our content helpful, if you find this podcast helpful, then your gift to me uh, could be this. If you if you do find it helpful, then write a review or rate our content and make sure you subscribe or follow. I can't emphasize enough how helpful that is. It really does help us to get the word out there so we can invest in more leaders to become everything they're meant to be. It also means a lot to me personally when people like you and people in our community share our content on social media. So if you do that, then please do look for me, Jono White, to tag me and look to tag Clarity uh, on whatever platform you're on. And our team, including me, I'm always looking to see when people have mentioned us so that I can engage with you. And also we look at sharing content. So if you if you write something about something we've done, there's also a good chance we'll share that with our followers. So if you could do that, that is a massive, massive help as we try to invest in as many leaders as we can around the world. Last of all, you can check out my book about how to deal with difficult people even if you hate conflict. It's called Step Up or Step Out. It's available on Amazon. You can just look up Step Up or Step Out John O'White or you can go to store.consultclarity.org forward slash book and check it out there. I have coached leader after leader after leader and in more than 50% of the sessions, this topic comes up. How do I deal with this person? I'm finding it really difficult and, and I just want to find a way that doesn't blow up to do a really, just to have a difficult conversation, to lead them better. How do I do that? There's a three-step process that I outline in this book that I believe can help you. Okay, let's get into today's episode of the Leadership Conversations podcast. Enjoy. Welcome to another episode of the Leadership Conversations podcast. Today's guest is Glenn Robbins. Glenn is the superintendent of schools at the Brigantine Public School District. Welcome, Glenn. Hey, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for coming uh, for coming on. And, and uh, I love chatting to leaders in education, such an important field. Uh, first, for our listeners, 
can you give them a bit of a window into the life of Glenn? You know, what's it like to be a superintendent of schools uh, at Brigantine Public School District? And also anything else you want to share about a day in the life of Glenn? Yeah, that's a loaded question in today's society. Um, but I am the <laughs> proud superintendent. And this also this year, I took over the principal position too. Uh, so usually when leaders are trying to jump out of the position in this COVID time, I decided to take on more, uh, feeling that I could, and my board supported me in that role as well. So um, I work at the Brigantine Public School District, which is located in Brigantine, New Jersey. And for your listeners to make it easier, if they just Google Atlantic City, New Jersey, um, we're right at the beach. So we're at my office is about three blocks over from the ocean and um, surrounded by five miles of coastline. So I'm very blessed to be where I'm at. Uh, we're a pre-K to eight district. And, um, you know, I've been there uh, for just just the other day it was two years. And a quick side note, I started in February and up in uh, New Jersey, the world shut down in March. So I was only there for one month before the world turned wow. upside down with COVID. <laughs> and, um, you know, quite a unique experience, but we've ex- succeeded and exceeded many expectations this past two years that I'm quite proud of. Yeah, congratulations. And maybe that's something we can we can hear a bit <laughs> more about because it's it certainly hasn't been easy. Okay. And I feel... For, for many different sectors, and uh, but I feel like education has been uh, quite a difficult sector for for leaders and for educators through through COVID. Um, let's uh, let's hear a little bit about your story uh, next, Glenn. It would be great to hear. Feel free to go back as far as you want to childhood. What are some of the moments that really shaped you becoming the leader and the person you are today? Oh, that's a great question. I think it had to be my upbringing. Um, I was not born into an educational family. I was born into um, water well drilling. Um, (laughs) And I had the opportunity to go to college and moved on. And I got to meet some exciting professors and teachers along the way. Um, I think my soccer career, football, uh, you'll call it, uh, career also got me established into that. And, you know, I was surrounded by educators in um, my neighborhood where I grew up at. So they were always intriguing to me, and I loved coaching football um, in that regard. So I wanted to be a, a football coach. And then from there, I decided I wanted to be an assistant principal, and I wanted to move up to principal. And then people would say, oh, you'd make a really good superintendent. And I'd laugh at them and say, no way. And then sure enough, here we are today. Um, so I, I really have to give it to the teachers that I've had, uh, my mentors that I've had coming up, my coaches that I've had coming up helping me shape who I am today. And throughout those experiences, I've also encountered people who taught me a lot of things on what not to do by watching and modeling after them. (laughs) Um, So, you know, you try to learn from successes and failures by watching others so you don't have to fail as well in those regards and try to be successful. So, and I'll be honest with you, as I continue to grow, I continue to network and continue to meet and uh, connect with different people. And, you know, jumping on social media was something that really helped me. And from there, you know, it just exploded. I started sharing work that we were doing. And, you know, back in 2016, I was one of the, I was a national digital principal of the year. And I never would have thought I'd have gotten that. But that that was from digital connections that I made with people and brought it to our schools and was showcasing them. And then from there, it just kept, kept, you know, branching out. And I kept meeting different people and presenting in different parts of the country and, uh, you know, from there, I kept joining different committees. So I oversee New Jersey's largest uh, ed tech committee, as, as well as the ed tech conference called Texpo. Um, I'm a, oh, wow. a representative on the COSIN Empowered Superintendent Power, which is the uh, uh, superintendent panel for the United States. I I just recently was recognized by the Digital Promise League of Innovative Schools. Something I'm really proud about that because we got into the League of Innovative Schools during the pandemic. Um, you know, which is rather a, an awesome achievement by our staff to make that happen. Yeah. Um, I represented New Jersey on the uh, National Superintendent's Governing Board for three years. And, uh, you know, in, next week I'll be finalizing and finishing up become, getting my National Superintendent Certification. I'll be, um, from what I'm being told, the third person ever to achieve that in New Jersey. So wow. uh, I've been very blessed in that regard by meeting different people, connecting with different people. 
And, you know, and from there, too, I was able to bring different people in to speak with my staff, you know, uh, whether it was virtually or in person. And some of the big names that you would have pay a lot of money for in keynoting, um, I became great friends with. And we worked out deals here and there to uh, support my staff and support my community and support my kids to make it even better. So, Love you it. know, like I said, I kept learning. I kept watching. I kept modeling and, you know, always striving to learn something new each day and be 1% better. And, uh, and I think I attribute that also now to being a husband and a father, you know, as, and then an educator. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, fantastic and great to hear a bit of your journey. Let's go back to your upbringing. You, you mentioned that played a big part. What was it about your upbringing mm-hmm. that, you, that you see really shaped you, particularly as a leader, for how you lead today? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know what? When I played soccer or football, um, we played on a very successful team that was nationally ranked. And I had a coach um, that ran a very tight ship, kind of old school. uh, But from an organizational standpoint, the way he ran it and the structure of it was really intriguing to me. And I think it was always like an inner desire that I always wanted to play for him. Even when I wasn't at the high school level yet, I would go out there when I was younger. And... um, he would challenge me and he challenged me to be get better and challenged me to rise up. And I think that internal drive that I had plus having him and, you know, some other family members along the way push me uh, really helped to shape me who I am. I, I guess, you know, like I said, I wasn't raised with much and I had to earn every step of the way. So, you know, I always had something of an inner fire to try to prove to myself that I could always do something when others would tell me I would not succeed. (laughs) And then I kind of took that personally at times. So, (laughs) you know, and I've been told many times I would not be successful and not succeed in life. And uh, like I said, that I took it and internalized it and tried to use it for uh, strength instead of anger. And I think that gives you such a unique empathy for students who might be coming from a world where they're told that a lot. Yes. Yes, yes, very much so. And I think that's given me a lot of different perspective. And, you know, when I started teaming up and looking into uh, design thinking and, and Stanford's D school and the, and the empathy based of it, you know, looking at it from the lens of a, of a learner and looking at it from a lens of a kid. And I think, you know, empathy has always been there and, and social emotional learning has always been there. And I know it's a much bigger term nowadays, you know, to be much more yeah. empathetic to your employees, but uh, because of the COVID um, world that we're in. But, you know, if anything, it's now more compassion. And I applaud people for finally realizing as a leader that you need to be compassionate, you need to be empathetic, you need to be respectful and trustful. But so many times they forget to do that to the kids. So they, they just keep telling the kids <laughs> what to do instead of actually asking them, hey, what are your thoughts? You know, where, where are you coming from? You know, yeah. and same thing for the staff, you know, like, you know, how can I better you? How can I help you? How how was your family? You know, these are meaningful conversations that should be going on everywhere. And they don't always happen, unfortunately, for many reasons. Yeah, you're right. They don't. Um, interested to hear about that coach who that I love how you said that you're like, I was always wanting to be on his team. Are there any moments in particular mm-hmm. you me- you remember watching how he led through a, uh, you know, a, a game where where things didn't go your way or, or helped you as a team really um, exceed your expectations in how you played or any particular stories that come to mind of him and, and how he led? You know, I, I think about that every once in a while. And then you remember things because it's so much older now in life. <laughs> and um, what I remember, like I said, organizationally and structurally, how he ran it. You know, he, he gave trust and respect to his players, but he also challenged and supported them. So, yeah, he loved you and he supported you. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll never forget. I remember I had um, – we had uh, just finished into the Southern New Jersey championship game and it was going to be on a Saturday. And uh, I remember, uh, I'm sorry, it was going to be on a Friday. And uh, I remember my grandfather had passed away that week. And I went to him and said, look, um, you know, just so you know, if the game gets canceled because of the weather, my grandfather's funeral is the next day, the rain date, and I won't make the game. And uh, he never said anything. He said, okay, I respect that. 
And I'll never forget, it's torrential pouring on Friday morning, and I'm thinking the game's going to get canceled. I'm driving to school, and I look over at the soccer field, the pitch, and it is completely tarped over. And um, I got into the building, and he, he tracked me down. He said, did you see the field? And I said, yeah, I did. He goes, the game's on today. You're not missing it. This is for you. And, you know, that was like, holy cow, I can't believe he believes in me that much and loves me that much. And then he brought the entire team after winning that. We went on to win the state championship. But he brought the whole team the next day to the, my grandfather's funeral. And that really oh, shaped man. me in years yeah. to come because he ran not only that team uh, as a family, but as an organization. But he also ran camps mm. that I was a part of. He ran yep. booster programs. He ran feeder programs. And when I came up through the ranks as a teacher, I tried to follow his model. And it was beyond successful. And I was beyond fortunate to have that learning experience. And I think from there, having that made me somewhat of a better leader, not only on the pitch, but also in the classroom, also at the administrative level. And then as a leader itself, you know, um, he taught me a lot. And I, I, I will never, never forget that. Yeah, thank you for sharing that story. That's so profound. <laughs> you see the field, I've tarped the field, that's for you, so you don't miss the game. Um, that's precious. That's uh, that's beautiful. Uh, what about other mentors? Any As you grew older and you know, started, started leading, taking on roles, are there any other mentors that come to mind who really had a big uh, impact on you? Yeah. Um, one in particular would be uh, Bob Gargiulo. And uh, the reason why I mentioned Bob is I remember I was an assistant principal for five years, and then I got a first principal job at a middle school. Very excited. But I spent a lot of my time the first two years assisting the superintendent with a lot of administrative issues. And um, I remember my secretary at the time saying, hey, you spend more time down in the superintendent's office doing that kind of work than you do in your building. And I said, I know, but I'm, I got to do what the boss tells me. And um, I remember that my boss retired and she was fantastic because she gave me a chance that no one will give. And then Bob gets hired as an interim. And I remember going to Bob and I said, Bob, you know, what would you like of me? You know, you're my new boss. I run the middle school. You tell me what you need and I'll do it. And I'll never forget it. He said, you know, you run the building the way you want to run it. And like I said, from that point on, I made a couple of teaching moves uh, <laughs> for personnel. We made some changes in the policies and I'm sorry, changes in the uh, the curriculums and we changed some programming around and we completely revamped the hallways at that time uh, to idea street. So we had surfboard tables out in the hallways, high top tables, bike desk, Lego boards. You know, we made it like a very interactive school, whiteboards everywhere for the kids to write on. You know, this is back, you know, six, seven, eight years ago. And, um, and wow. I know that's become more of a trend now. And, you know, we revamped it and we teamed up with a local hospital for seventh grade and they were working for pediatric unit uh, doctors on how to design it better for kids that are in the hospital. So they were trying to design, um, you know, toys or tools or, you know, technology to do interactive with kids that could not leave the hospital. And we had kids in another grade 3D printing arms. And, you know, we had all these other things, Three, you know, teachers in English class that were having kids code video games by Arduinos, you know, that had never used that before and kids designing video games. And we gave the kids egg camp period, which is where they get to choose for a whole week what they wanted to learn. And they led the way, not the teachers. And like I said, from there, it just really exploded. And, um, you know, Bob kept help pushing me and kept, you know, uh, overseeing all the things we were doing. And, and we opened up a TV studio, which we had never had, and that became successful. So the fact that I was able to go to him and he was somebody that truly believed in me that I could do stuff with my staff, but he was also there to support me. You know, he challenged me, but he supported me. And he kept saying, what's next? How can we do this differently? And, you know, he took mm. care of a lot of the uh, administrative paperwork and so forth and showed me the ropes along the way. And, uh, you know, I'll never forget, he, he you know, tried to um, help me grow. And eventually when a job opening came uh, several years later, you know, I remember him reaching out to me and saying, hey, you need to put in for this job. And that's where I'm at now. I'm brigantine. And the rest is history from there. So, you know, he was always there and he still is there. He's retired for the last several years now. And uh, but we still talk at least once or twice a week, you know, giving me insight because he's done so much in his 40 plus years in education. Wow. Yeah. So, 
Um, I, I value having that. And I have several other mentors as well um, because I think that's extremely valuable. You're, you know, you're a second rate replica of your mentors. And if you get a bad one, that's a kiss of death. So, yeah. you know, you don't get to pick your parents, but you get to pick your mentors. You get to pick your leaders that you want to model off of and learn from. And I've been rather blessed to have him and many others too. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, are there any stories that come to mind of how he led? I, that was a, I love that story of how he said, no, I want you to run it the way you want to, the way you want to run it. And that to me, I get so excited about that because I always wonder why leaders don't get out of the way more and really just have great people mm. hire them, get out of the way and let them really run. And then you said something really great, which was not just challenge, but then support, not just say off you go, but actually be there then to mm -hmm. I love, do the admin work, to do some of the things that actually help to unblock, you know, get rid of roadblocks for you to really fly. Um, any other stories yeah. that come to yeah. mind where you admired how he handled situations or just uh you know any any other meaningful stories around that particular mentor that come to mind well you know what i think he, he helped me adjust as a leader you know i come up through a very regimented um field before that i was always wearing a suit i was always you know prim and proper i always had to do everything you know dot everything and cross everything um almost like you're, you're like i said it was just a, a extremely professional and i remember bob trying to break down those barriers saying hey make school fun you're you're here all day long you know you can do dress down days you can do dress like a kid you can do all these things to make it more fun for the kid because that's what it's all about you don't have to be you know wearing a suit every single day um you know because if you have to wear a suit to impress people as a leader you're not always doing something right and uh i'll, I'll never forget i had the one time um, there was a, you know, wear a jean day. And the first time ever in my life, you know, as an administrator, I wore jeans and I dressed down, you know, it was a football jersey day. And I remember getting a call on the radio, uh, Glenn, get down here to the fight in the cafeteria. So I go running down, you know, because we'd never had a fight down here before. And I'm like, oh my God, what's going on? And I come bursting through the cafeteria doors and all the kids are standing up clapping, you know, and he's like, oh, Mr. Robbins dressed down finally. So, you know, he made me realize to have fun. And then, <laughs> when I started That's going out the trips to California, um, you know, I'll, I'll never forget we were at one conference and I, I saw a dean of an Ivy League school um, that was super dressed down. Look, he's going to the beach. And I remember Bob hitting me on the arm and saying, see, he runs one of the greatest schools in the country and he's dressed down. You know, he has fun, <laughs> you know, so it, it made me look at life and leadership perspective in a different way that I, I so I think really needed at that time and moment in my life, you know, to make me better. Yeah, and I think that that needed to start pushing towards more empathy and more understanding of, you know, not just the kids, but also the staff members. He made me realize it wasn't just mm. doesn't always have to be the boss. You know, the boss can be personable. You know, the boss can be much more approachable, which I always thought I was. And he made me more. You know, so he taught me a lot of little tricks here and there along the way, but yeah. um, just his enthusiasm and attitude and professionalism towards me, teaching me the little things that, you know, don't sweat the small stuff in a way, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's, that's brilliant. And what, what a great story. Um, yeah. Thank you. I, I remember something for me <laughs> that, uh, that, that, that sort of memory brought up for me is one of the mentors in my life, particularly in consulting, who he's probably one of the consultants I respect most um, in the world, but he actually lives in Brisbane where I live mm -hmm. as well. His name's Andrew Moore. He works with Patrick Lanchoni's table group. Um, and I reached out to him when I was actually thinking about starting Clarity. And uh, I okay. uh, just found his, uh, found, his, found his number and called him and thought, oh, well, he's based in Brisbane. Uh, what are the chances? And I called him and, and he picked up and I said, hey, any chance? I basically explained that I wanted to start Clarity. I said, I think you're doing what I want to do. And to be honest, I don't really know what that looks like. And I'd, I'd love to shout you a coffee and just find find out. And he said, <laughs> it was so funny. He said, you know what? We've just had our, uh, our second baby in the past couple of days. So I've got a bit of time on my hands. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and he said because I've taken some time off, so yeah, I can wander down to the cafe near me if you can if you can make it here. I said sure. So yeah, I uh, I ended up at the cafe and uh, waiting for him to turn up, and I didn't really know what to expect. But he turned up. I just remember he turned up in shorts and a t shirt and thongs with like typical Aussie <laughs> sort of uh, 
<laughs> you know, and uh, or, or sandals, you know, just and uh, and he then proceeded to just give me the best advice around, you know, really high ticket, high level consulting. He's sought after and uh, is an incredibly wise and brilliant consultant. And it stuck with me that he just wandered down, walked down from his house. In- <laughs> <laughs> the most mm-hmm. unassuming and yet at the same time the most brilliant and and I've never I've never forgotten that and it just um I just love that about him and uh, and your story really reminded me um of that about well, how Andrew and you know what's like unique me. about that and what's unique about that story what you just told me making that cold call on a way um is sort of like what I did during the pandemic um so when we we locked down in March um, we know no one knew what to do. We didn't know we were we were obviously virtual at that time for our kids, but it was new. And you know, everybody's locked down and you know, people crave human connection. And we were doing our Zooms and so forth to have this connection with the classes. And I said, you know what, I, I need to do something besides calling every staff member and trying to figure out how their families are and how they are. And it was that was like I said, my first month on the job and trying to connect with them. I started reaching out to friends and said, hey, would you talk to my staff once a week uh, for 30 minutes uh, as a positive um, moment to refill their minds, souls, and hearts, you know, because they're doing so much right now. And one person said yes, and then I called somebody else, <laughs> and they're like, yes. And then I called another person, and they're like, yes. And, you know, there's a friend of mine, but they're, they're great uh, keynote speakers everywhere. <laughs> I love and then that. I remember I, I called the one friend back, and I said, hey, you know, you got you. You have all these connections and so forth. You talk to some of the best writers in America. Do you have anybody you could connect me with? And I remember he connected me with uh, Alex Bamian. And Alex is the youngest best-selling author ever in business writing uh, in the United States, called The Third Door. And um, I reached out to him, like you know, my friend told me to do, and Alex responded. And the funny thing was, my friend had told me, he's like, "Look, think about it. You're home. Everybody else is home." They're not doing anything. They can't go on the road. They can't talk to anybody in person. So hit them up. And then when I talked to Alex, he gave me a similar speech. So it just kept going. So I went for <laughs> a solid year and a half having a positive speaker for my staff. Wow. And I had some of the top authors in the country. I had some of the top educational speakers in the country. But just like that, they were people willing to give up their time, sort of like your mentor did on a cold call. And it was a simple ask, and I was surprised. You know, you, you never know unless you try. And um, <laughs> I remember trying to get one person, and I couldn't get him, so I kept calling around to, like, his uh, personal assistant. You know, so I wouldn't stop. And that was Alex's story. I love telling him story about the third door. <laughs> you know, there's yeah. obviously the front door, the side door, and then there's the back door. And, um, you know, extraordinary story about how he would start a school and how he would, you know, if he was his friend, he dropped out of USC. And he said, if I could start a school one night at a frat party, who would your teachers be? And he said, all right, economics would be Warren Buffett and filmography would be Steven Spielberg and <laughs> music would be Lady Gaga. And he just kept going. And he said, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to a publisher and I'm going to get you know funding for this. And I'm going to trace down all these people and interview them. And sure enough, he did. And he talks about how he did the cold calls, how he did the third doors, how he had to you know meet oh, a awesome. friend of the friend of a friend to get somebody. So you know, when he telling me that, I kept it kept driving me more to keep doing that. And like I said, the benefit was I was trying to help my staff out the whole time. So it was like they were helping me personally grow, and I was helping them grow too. So cool stories together. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, you never know unless you ask. I love that. That's a good message. That's right. That's so good. Uh, well, let's jump into Leadership Express. I've got a bunch of questions for you. You ready? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, firstly, what's a book that you've gifted a lot to other people? Um, author is Ryan Holiday, Obstacle is the Way. Hey, that's great. That was the recommendation from my last um, episode, which I love because right, when you hear it more than once, right, I feel well, I like it's... Gi- I'll give you another one. I'll, gi- I'll give you another one, Dan. Uh, sure, fast, yeah, yeah. Uh, team of <laughs> Teens. Yeah, Team of Teens by General Stanley McChrystal. Oh, brilliant. Oh, they're, they're two fantastic recommendations. Okay, uh, any great podcasts you're listening to or other sources you're enjoying reading, watching, listening to right now, Glenn? Uh, Podcast-wise, I listen to a lot. Um, Books-wise, I read a lot too. Um, I listen to Ryan Holiday's book, uh, podcast. I have John Gordon's. 
uh, Gary V, um, Brian Koppelman of the uh, the moment, Ed Milet, um, <laughs> I could go on Jay Shetty, um, Tim Ferriss, uh, Todd Henry. I don't know if you've heard of his work at all. He's a fantastic no, author. Yeah, as yeah. Well as, uh, yeah, Todd Henry, Accidental Creative. Check him out. I actually, Drew Connections, was able to get him to be one of my keynotes a couple years ago at a big Amazing. tech conference. So, um, okay, yeah, I'll um, check him out. Yeah, Gail, Gail Allen, Curious Mind. So, yeah, I could keep going and going. But, uh, and then book wise, anything by Robert Greene or Ryan Holiday, yes. uh, John Maxwell, I'm very much into. <laughs> yeah, no, those list of names, if so, I feel like um, anyone listening, there's a good list of names to spend a year investigating their podcast, their books. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a very rich couple of minutes of recommendations. That's great, Glenn. Love it. Uh, what is a le a recent leadership lesson you've learned for the first time or been reminded of? Oh, wow. That's a really good question. Um, you know, I think as the world wants to get back to normal, you know, I think we have to remember that there are so many things going on in the minds and hearts and souls of every single person. So you need to continue to remember compassion. You know, there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of angst out there, but you've got to continue to be compassionate and kind. You know, at times that you want to be tough or, you know, stubborn or aggressive, you can't be. You, you have to be kind and compassionate to people and understand where they're coming from. Because that's the only way we're going to get through all this together is by working together and understanding where each person's coming from. Yeah, that's great, Glenn. Uh, what's a time management or productivity tip you'd give or a tool or resource you use in that space? Oh, great one. Um, I do, I put different reminders on my own personal calendar, you know, so I have a meditation time that I do take at least 20 to 30 minutes a day. Um, I do continue to walk around and so forth and be taking uh, gratitude walks and so forth for myself to think about three to five things that I'm grateful for that day. Um, I think those are two really important things throughout my day. Yeah, they're great. Uh, what about work-life balance? This is always interesting, people's uh, opinions on that. But do you have any <sighs> tips for leaders around yeah, I do. this uh, area of life? Wow, that's, a t that's the toughest one. And I'll be honest with you, that is a question I ask every person I try to meet and, uh, that I model after and, and aspire to be. And I keep getting the same responses. I'm not that good at it. Um, yeah, the, the balance is extremely tough. But just remember, if you learned anything, uh, especially during the past two years, is that you know you might be the only father the only husband that your family is ever going to have and you need to remember that um you know they can replace you very easily at work but mm. it's very hard to replace you at home yeah that's that's well said that's actually a great great thought what's a great piece of advice you've received Ooh, just one <laughs> um you, you know what? More than I, one if you not like. the problem. You, it's not the problem. You, yeah, it's not the problem you have. It's how you handle it. You have to control the controllables. You know, mm. life is going to throw a lot at you, but you control the controllables. And that's something that I I heard from my grandfather years ago, and then I kept evolving into it. And yeah, I think that's why I enjoy a lot of Ryan Holiday books and Robert Greens talking about stoic and so forth and yeah. stoicism and uh, trying to con be calm and understanding. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, what's a big struggle or problem that educational leaders are facing today? Uh, I think a big problem is that there is a rush to have everything done tomorrow. You know, greatness takes time. You know, some of the best coaches in the world took how many years before they win a championship? You know, some of the greatest systems and models and universities or whatever and schools took how many years before they got to their successes? So, you know, you, you can have a finite goals, but you have to have an infinite mindset. You have to understand that, you know, you're not just building something now that's mm. going to be coming in years to come. But you also got to remember that you're a living, breathing organism, that your organization is going to continue yeah. to grow after you leave. So how do you continue to leave it in a better place as you continue to grow? And how are you raising future leaders to take over that spot one day? Yeah, that's gold. A movie or TV show that really impacted you? <laughs> oh, wow. 
Uh, I live near the ocean, so Jaws did not help when I was a kid. Uh, the shark movie. Um, <laughs> Great for remembering uh, a um, say... semitone, though. That's uh, for anyone musical. That's uh, uh, I always. I'm always trying to learn and remember things in music. I, I play some acoustic guitar and sing. Okay. And uh, yeah, so if you're ever wanting to remember what a semitone is, the da -na 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 is uh, is really helpful. Uh, but yeah, not not when you or uh, kids or anyone else is near the beach. That's not a helpful moment. Yeah, and then TV show was a show growing up uh, called Seinfeld. I was very big into oh. Seinfeld. Do you have a favorite Seinfeld moment? I can't help but ask that. There'll be lots of Seinfeld fans listening. Oh, there's just, there's way there's too, too many. many. <laughs> there's too um, many. You know, something really cool. We, we, we started a TV program up at our school this year. They have one years ago and when the person retired they took it with them took it over so i restarted that this year and uh they jumped on it this past month was uh national soup month so <laughs> they got together and they were showing clips of the soup nazi and yes. all, all month long <laughs> on the tv broadcast so we'd always say next and you yeah, know. <laughs> next no soup for you oh that's yeah i was gonna say that that's i don't know what it is about that episode but it's one of the most memorable isn't it it's just so ridiculous and funny <laughs> Ah, oh, such a great show. Uh, okay, last few. This is so much fun. A quote that you're particularly fond of for life or leadership. Oh, wow. Um, uh, it's paraphrasing in um, Ryan Holiday's book, I believe it's The Optical Away, that life is going to be difficult and it's going to slice you here and there. And when they slice you, they're going to see um, something rock solid or they're going to see a bunch of hot air and bullshit. So <laughs> apologies for language, but you know, no, it no, makes no, you no. think, okay. you know, are you, are you strong enough for it? Or are you all talk, you know, uh, I like, like that. Uh, a leader or an ink and ink and uh, pen and ink philosopher. There's a difference. <laughs> I like the fact that in that quote, there's, it's like, it's inevitable. You're going to get sliced. And I think that's so helpful, right? Mm -hmm. After time, uh, mm -hmm. something I love that's similar is, uh, and I think, I think the first time I heard it was from a, uh, a pastor, an American pastor named Stephen Furtick. He talked about the difference between mm -hmm. expectation and experience is frustration. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be less frustrated, mm -hmm. change your expectations. And, um, and just this idea that if we, if, as an example, if we just expect that things are going to be easy or like, oh yeah, I'm not going to have any, uh, <laughs> everyone's just going to work. With me easily, things are going to go my way. Won't be anything left to feel, particularly the past couple of years. Then you, there's so much frustration yeah. because you're constantly uh, dealing with your own unrealistic expectations. So I love that quote. That's great. Um, yeah, yeah. And I, I think you can tie that into another great one by Winston Churchill, which is if you stop, you'll never reach your destination if you stop and throw stones at every dog that barks. You know, mm. you, you really have to understand what is. What needs to captivate your attention and, and what can you let go? Yeah, actually, my favorite quote of all time is a Winston Churchill quote. Uh, it's uh, okay. history History will be kind to me for I intend to write it. Yes. Isn't that yes, good? Yes, that's a great one. I love that. I yes. just There's so many angles to that that it just, uh, yeah, which I love that about the World War, you know, about him going, history is going to be kind to me. You know what? Because I intend to write it. Like we're going to... We're yes. going to make this yes. right and, and write history. Anyway, uh, if you could only give one piece of leadership advice to a young leader, what would you say? One piece of advice, get at least two mentors, one older one and one reverse one. Ooh, like where you're mentoring them. Uh, no, what do you mean? What do you mean by reverse? Or you get somebody younger. Uh, yeah, so that could be that where you're you're helping them out because you're giving back, and or you get somebody younger than you. Yeah, and that younger yeah, person yeah. is going to show you things that you don't know how to do anymore. You might never saw. So, I think uh -huh. that's a benefit of working with the schools. I'll go talk to the kids about what apps, what <laughs> technology, what devices are they using, and they're mentoring me. They're teaching yeah. me. Yeah, you know? yeah. So it, it's a two way street. So you know, yeah, anybody can teach you something. That's why I say one order. One younger is the reverse. Yeah, I've never heard of reverse mentoring before. That's so, that's such a cool idea. Very, really good concept. Um, it kind of like I've heard of that idea before, but never quite articulated mm -hmm. so succinctly. Have one mentor and mm -hmm. one reverse mentor, where they're both mentoring you, but one's older, one's younger. That's uh, that's yep. good, Glenn. 
That's worth a listen to the podcast for anyone who just got that. That's gold. (laughs) (laughs) And last question, what's the best thing you're doing at the moment as a leader, as a school, you know, an initiative, a strategy, just a really great thing that you have stumbled across or it's been working really well that other leaders should know about? Wow, that's a great question. Um, I think I'm most passionate and proud that last year, uh, in the mix of the pandemic, we were one of the few schools in the entire state of New Jersey, and probably in the area, um, to be open every single day, five days a week, regular schedule. And mm. we were able to do that by getting all the stakeholders involved. And I mean, every board member, every city council, the mayor, fire, OEM, public works, food services, parents, teachers, you know, and we led it from a non-egotistical approach and said, how do we do this together? And from that point on, like I mentioned, we were able to get, you know, League of Innovative Schools for all the great things that we continue to evolve on, you know, mm. by revamping our furniture spacing in the library. Uh, we created a giant esports arena for our middle school that's going to rival universities. That's going to finish up real soon. Um, that the kids now call the Abyss and we're the Megalodons because we live next to the water. Um, <laughs> You know, that. we're revamping, we, you know, with the laser printers, we, we've constantly got the kids on the radio and working on the YouTube, um, teaming up with local affiliations, um, revamping some programs here and there. Uh, we were named the, the, by the insurance companies last year as the safety district of the year. Now to get that in the middle of the pandemic is saying something that I'm extremely proud of about the work that we did by yeah. remaining open. And, you know, and I think I attribute that to, like I said, to all the stakeholders, my association for the teachers, our board, everybody working together as one and compassionate human beings, um, trying to do the best thing, which was for kids. And, you know, we keep building and doing different things for kids. And uh, lastly, I'm, like I said, from the start, I'm very intentional about the social, emotional well-being of my staff. Yes. And I continue to try to help them and giving them the resources and so forth. Um, I know that goes on to our students, which then goes home to the families and then goes out to the community. So uh, I, I'm just really proud of the work that we've done in the last two years in the mix of everything. And uh, we have so much more great things ahead. Yeah, fantastic. What a great place to to uh, to wrap up. That's a wonderful story and incredible achievement, uh, particularly the safety award during COVID <laughs> uh, in a time of such yeah. Yeah. Um, anxiety around safety for so many. That, that means a lot. Um, for people who have just loved listening to you and want to find out more about your school district, but also find you online, LinkedIn or elsewhere, where's okay. the best place for people to find you online, Glenn? Yeah, so you can look me up at uh, Glenn Robbins, uh, New Jersey, obviously, or uh, my Twitter handle is Glenn R eighteen oh nine. You can look up Glenn Robbins on the Facebook and or LinkedIn as well, um, and then you can always um, email me too, uh, Glenn R. 1809 at gmail.com. That's two N G L E N N R 1809 at Gmail. Fantastic. Well, that, uh, I think, uh, you'll probably have some people taking up on that because I have no doubt that today will have really made a difference for some people. And, and I always love imagining the person who's driving just another day happens to turn this episode on and Glenn just, just hits them with the Ryan Holiday quote, or the you know the story about getting all the stakeholders, and <laughs> and I I really uh, I really enjoyed it. So I, I want to thank our listeners for tuning in, and do make sure you let us know and let Glenn know if today's episode has really uh, made a difference for you, because it's always great to get that feedback. And don't forget, I also have the John O'White Leadership Podcast and the Leadership Question of the Day. So two podcasts that are more. One, just a question to, to put a stone in your shoe every day and the other one more uh, just traditional me uh, just giving you points on casting vision and, and leading and well-being and a bunch of different things. But I want to finish today by saying a massive thank you to Glenn for being so generous with your time, for sharing your wisdom and uh, honestly one of the most enjoyable uh, episodes but also Leadership Express rounds. That was so much fun. I feel like I feel like I could listen to that 20 times over and, and probably still be getting things out of it and writing <laughs> notes and uh, and chasing up new podcasts. And uh, it, it's been a joy to connect with you. So thank you so much for coming on, Glenn. No, thank you, honored and humbled that you uh, considered me. Thank you. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Leadership Conversations podcast as much as I did. If you're joining us for the first time, don't forget to check out consultclarity.org. That's our website, consultclarity.org. We have so many free resources on there, including our seven questions on leadership series. We've had more than 1,500 leaders from all over the world in all different roles, in different industries, answer these seven questions on leadership and leaders give these in-depth answers around how they spend their time, uh, a book that's been significant for them. It's just a gold mine. It's completely free to access. So go to consultclarity.org and look for that. We'd also love to interview you about your leadership. I believe your experience, your life, your context means that you have advice on leadership that other leaders can learn from. Yes, you, if you're going, not me. Well, no, I really believe you would have something to add. So if you're looking for a way to give back, it's completely free to get involved. And we would love to interview you through the seven questions on leadership. You just go to consultclarity.org forward slash seven dash questions dash interest or Google consultclarity.org seven questions interest and fill out the form and get involved. We have a free resource on our website called the Leadership Survival Guide. It's a 57 page ebook, 10 world-class leaders giving their thoughts on leadership and that's completely free. It's available on our homepage, consultclarity.org right at the top. So make sure you go and get that and download it today. And we have a free daily email that you can subscribe to. We send this out to over 15,000 leaders from around the world. And uh, it contains the highlights of content from our podcasts, our blogs, um, our books, books we're reading. It's got the best content and it gives you exclusive, limited, early access to our masterclasses, workshops, new products, special offers. It's all for our subscribers. You can go to consultclarity.org forward slash subscribe and join 15,000 other leaders. And you know, my gift to you is to work really hard, particularly through the Leadership Conversations podcast. I have been blown away by the quality of the leaders and I'm learning as much as anyone in doing these interviews. So I, I'm having a great time. And my gift to you is to keep lining up the best leaders I can to invest in your leadership. Your gift to me, if you're finding this helpful, there is something that you could do that would help us out massively. And that is to write a review and to leave a rating for our podcast or wherever you're watching or listening to this. I can't tell you how much that helps us out. Also subscribe or follow. It really does make a difference in helping us to help more leaders become everything they're meant to be. Another thing that means a lot to me personally is when I see our community share our content. So if you do share this or any other piece of content on social media, then thank you and, and please do that. And look for me, John O'White, or Clarity and tag us in your post. Our team is always looking for posts to engage with from our community. And there's also a chance that we'll share your content uh, to go beyond and share it with our followers. Last of all, you can check out my book. It's called Step Up or Step Out, How to Deal with Difficult People Even If You Hate Conflict. I wrote this book because 50% of the coaching sessions I have with leaders, this topic comes up again and again and again. And it's this idea of how do I have this difficult conversation? How do I lead this person better when I'm finding them difficult? Or in some cases you look and you say, I think I might be leading a difficult person. They're just quite difficult to lead or I'm finding them quite difficult to lead. So there's a three-step process that I unpack in step up or step out. And the amazing thing, and I've literally done this myself and I've heard it anecdotally from other leaders as I've coached them, is that if you follow this process, you will see that person step up and change their behavior or make a decision, which is to step out some of the time. 95% uh, of the time, people will step up or step out in just four weeks. And I stand by that. It's uh, You have to read the book to understand, but uh, I really do believe in it and I've experienced it firsthand. It works. So you can go to Amazon, look up Step Up or Step Out John O'White or store.consultclarity.org forward slash book. Well, thank you so much for listening. We're going to be back with a new episode next time of the Leadership Conversations podcast. And I hope today has helped you to take another step towards becoming the leader you're meant to be. See you next time.